in plain English so everybody can hear it and it's nice and crystal clear. Canada does not have a gun problem. The guns that we have are highly regulated. In fact, getting your gun license here in Canada is probably one of the more difficult things to do in terms of having to qualify for anything uh, in this country. It's very heavily monitored. It's very difficult to go through that process. If you have a speeding ticket, if you have even spat on the sidewalk or thrown a piece of garbage on the ground and of in a garbage can the rcmp and the investigative division that monitors the firearm license is aware of those little things welcome back to another video everybody see we're going to take me going to be taking a look at our favorite senator don platt and in this first clip he's just saying look man this has nothing to do with hunters hunters do not have the, uh, the the guns to commit crimes. And the crimes that are being committed with guns here in Canada are not from legal gun owner uh, individuals. They're from criminals. Criminals do not care about rules, which is why they commit crime. If by the same logic you want to penalize all gun owners in Canada, which is what the liberals are trying to do and have been doing for several years, then by that exact same logic, then nobody shall be able to drive any sort of motor vehicle because drunk drivers exist. See how that doesn't make sense? Exactly. Liberal logic. So, I'll just shut up, but not before I say, hey, why don't you subscribe and hit that like button and turn those post notifications on. It helps fight climate change and it makes the liberals cry. And now I can gladly shut up and we can get into this video. Senator Don Platt says Bill C-21 isn't dealing with guns in the hands of criminals. This bill is dealing with legal guns in the hands of hunters and sport shooters. If the intention is to... Uh, is the eradication of gun violence, then why did the NDP Liberal government repeal mandatory sentences with Bill C-5? Consultations we did. Uh, Thank you. Uh, my next question, uh, Minister, um, you talked about wanting to take the guns, the illegal guns out of criminals, and, and I don't think there's anybody around this table that doesn't support that. But this, of course, this bill isn't dealing with illegal guns in the hands of criminals. This bill is dealing with legal guns in the hands of hunters and sports shooters. But, uh, you know, if, if the government is so set on, on c combating gun crime and, and, and uh, your predecessor claimed that your government's goal with this bill is the eradication of gun violence, but under your government, Minister, Bill C-5, you have in fact repealed mandatory sentences for the following using a firearm or imitation firearm in the commission of an offense. Possession of a firearm or weapon knowing its possession is unauthorized. Possession of a prohibited or restricted firearm with ammunition. Possession of a weapon obtained by commission of an offense. Discharging a firearm with intent. Robbery with a firearm and extortion with a firearm. Uh, so I'm wondering, Minister, uh, how is this consistent with your goal in trying to eradicate gun violence when you remove, and I know you're going to say they've increased, uh, they've increased maximum penalties when the 10-year maximum was never handed out in the first place. So increasing maximum isn't what we're concerned about. You've taken away minimums. Why is that, Minister? So, Senator, um, again, I, just to go back to the initial part of your second question, it won't surprise you I don't agree with your characterization that we're taking guns away from lawful hunters and sports persons. Uh, that phrase gets repeated over and over again. It doesn't make it true. I just think I, I want to be careful to make it clear that I disagree with the premise of that question. You talked about legislation that Parliament adopted over a year ago. Uh, Matthew can go through some of the specific elements of Bill C-5. Uh, we may have a fundamental dif difference uh, of opinion with respect to the appropriate use of mandatory minimum sentences. I voted as a member of parliament for a number of mandatory minimum sentences. Uh, and uh, I also voted for legislation that I believe uh, brought them in line with some of the constitutional provisions of various court uh, decisions. I would also point, Senator, to the fact that we have given $900 million to provinces and territories precisely to improve law enforcement's ability, our partner law enforcement agencies, to go after the illegal guns and criminals who are using guns. I, I share your premise, Senator, entirely with respect to the fact that the focus has to be on 
the illegal use of firearms to commit criminal offenses. That should unite us all. On that, I think you and I would agree uh, quite easily. Thanks, Minister Sin. The problem in Canada is they are not hard enough on crime, which then says, hey, if I'm a criminal and I'm going to get into a criminal's mindset, then if I know I can commit a crime and not really be penalized for it, then what is stopping me? And that's the current mindset of criminals in Canada. It's our soft on bail policy. It's horrible. And that's why you have so many repeat offenders. Pierre Polyev has been very vocal about this issue, even with crime in Vancouver. And just to summarize something that he said in the past, I can't quote him verbatim because I don't exactly remember the specifics of what he said. It was something along the lines of the same 60 or 70 individuals have been arrested you know, 5,000 times in Vancouver in one year. That's like six arrests per day or something crazy per individual. So it's just wild. It's absolutely insane. And the fact that our liberal government thinks that they can just eradicate all gun violence in Canada by going after law-abiding gun owners who are less than 1% of gun crime in Canada. It's that minimal. Canadians are very respectful. They're very peaceful. And law-abiding citizens here in Canada do not wish to do harm to anyone or anything. So it's just crazy. And we're going to take a little shift from that. And we, we have another clip of Don Platt in a committee hearing uh, to show later on in the video. But I just kind of want to shift directions, get a little bit of humor going, right? Instead of showing a meme, let's just show this funny video here of a uh, the host directs white men to the back of the line at the NDP convention. That's right. Just shifting gears totally right at the start of the video. But... You'll see why in a second. A reminder that we will enforce gender parity at the mics, and Adrian explained the process with the yellow card as well. So please remember to give space to those who face systemic barriers and discrimination, including women, black, indigenous, and racialized folk in particular, people living with disabilities, and 2SLGBTQIA plus folk. Our convention has special speaker priority for gender equity. If you identify with a gender other than men for the purpose of the equity-seeking rule, you will have received a piece of yellow card stock during the registration process. So please raise this piece of yellow card stock when you arrive at the mic so that myself and Adrian as chairs can identify you easily. If you don't have one, there will be additional uh, cards available at the mics. As always, if you require support, please flag a volunteer and they will be happy to assist you. As New Democrats, we strive to create inclusive spaces where everyone gets a voice at the table. There is also a roving mic for anyone with accessibility needs. Um, so please... Um, you know, I think we, we have set up almost everyone who's got accessibility needs, but if not, please raise your hand and someone will come and help you. This is the Canada that our current government wants to um, enable. Facts uh, don't matter when it comes to feelings, apparently, and law-abiding gun owners and people that follow the law, doesn't matter. You're penalized with everyone who doesn't break the law. So by this logic, it's just kind of imploding our country. If you get special privileges for being anything but a white man, what's stopping people from just jokingly identifying as whatever they want in the heat of the moment so that they aren't you know, chastise or they're not ostracized, I guess would be the better word. It's just very bizarre. It's absolutely very bizarre. Now, I have another clip here of Senator Dom Plett that talks about Bill uh, C-234 continues to be delayed with harmful amendments in the Senate Committee of Agri Agriculture and Forestry. Let's take a look at this. You know you need 100 heat pumps for 100,000 square foot chicken barn. You know how much that will cost? I mean, we've got to get practical here. We've got to be realistic in what we're dealing with. And again, both the Green Party and the NDP supported this. So it's not a, it's not a partisan, you know, it's not a partisan initiative. So I, I think we have to get away from the partisan stuff and, and deal with the issue, which is helping farmers survive in this environment, this, this, 
the, this economic environment. We know how much food is costing in this country. And now we want, if you're going to add to the cost of running a farm, you're going to add to the cost of food. And it's, it's we're going down the wrong road. Uh, this, this bill had the support of MPs from every political party. It was passed by a vote of 176 to 146, including all Conservatives, all of the NDP, all of the Bloc, and all of the Green. Three brave Liberals who understand agriculture also voted for the bill, including the Chair of the House of Commons Agriculture and Agri-Food Committee, Cody Blow, Malbec MP Heath MacDonald, and Egmont MP Robert Morrissey. There is no reason to try to amend this bill. No reason at all. Yeah. It just seems like all of the people that are running the show just want to see our country crash and burn. Now, I like Don Plett. I like the fact that he is a senator, and it seems like our Senate is uh, one of the last lines of defense here in Canada. I like to show his clips because the Senate has a tremendous amount of power and a very large voice, but I feel like their footage just goes underappreciated and it just goes under the radar. You may be watching this. You may be watching this, and you may very well appreciate it, but it doesn't get nearly as much attention as our federally elected MPs, such as Pierre Poiliev and, unfortunately, Unfortunately, Justin Trudeau. Now, I do have another clip here of Senator Don Plett saying he asked Minister uh, LeBlanc at the SECD about the lack of consultations with Indigenous people by the NDP Liberal government prior to introducing Bill C-21. Let's see what he has to say. We'll be uh, succinct. I hope I can get both of my questions in if the minister will cooperate with me on this. Uh, maybe I can get them both in. Uh, Minister, um, you talked briefly in your opening remarks about engagement with Indigenous communities. We, in fact, have a submission from the Mohawk Council of Kaunaki in which they stated there was no consultation. Uh, let me just very briefly read what they say. There is no carve-out in Bill C-21 for the exercise of this inherent jurisdiction, nor was any consultation carried out to solicit our import. Other Indigenous groups, of course, have reported the same. How is that possible, Minister, when this bill clearly impacts them? They are saying no consultation. You are saying engagement. So, I, again, uh, Mr. Chair, through you to Senator Plett, that's a very good question. I, uh, again, believe that the elements of this bill, uh, and it's, it's stated clearly in the legislation, are respects, respectful of Indigenous rights. Um, my predecessor, Marco Mendicino, had a series of consultations uh, with... First of all, if the government, if the Liberal government cared about Indigenous rights and Indigenous quality of life, then why are there still tremendous amount of uh, Indigenous communities without fresh water and without proper infrastructure, which is something that Justin Trudeau promised in his initial... Uh, prime ministerial campaign and he's failed to do that and the NDP actually has been quite vocal against that which is very surprising since they have a coalition the NDP is so vocal about how little they actually trust Justin Trudeau because of all his failed promises that they bend over and touch their ankles as Trudeau slides up behind them and does what he does best just screw people over And the fact that <laughs> Dominic LeBlanc feels it's necessary to mention Marco Mendicino, to that I say, so long, farewell, you will not be missed, Marco Mendicino. He was a horrible member of Parliament, and I am actually very glad that we don't see him anymore because he's caused so much division, he's cost us so much money. And, well, he was among the top five, maybe even three most hated people here in Canada. Nobody misses him. Now, that hatred has now been projected onto different Liberal MPs, but Marco specifically was a douche magouche. Uh, indigenous groups. Um, Talal and I have a list here. We're happy to share that with you, uh, Senator, because it's, it's a good question. I see a number of Indigenous communities that were met with uh, in the winter and spring of this year. With respect to the particular community, Talal, do you have an answer for the Senator? 
I'm not going to touch it. Happy to jump in. Actually, I, I'd like to clarify as well. The bill as it stands right now, there were extensive consultations with indigenous uh, communities across the country when it was introduced the first time. The exactly, exactly. The question was on this bill. Uh, and this bill as well, when there were amendments introduced, we did further consultation, but most of these amendments were removed from this bill. But I'm happy to share with you the consultations we did. Uh, Thank you. It's crazy that this individual right here is the assistant deputy for the crime prevention uh, branch, and he still somehow thinks that it's a good idea to get rid of guns from legal law abiding citizens. It's, it, it, I just, I don't understand the logic. I don't think any gun owner, gun advocate understands that logic. And frankly, it is not a good look for the liberal government. And finally, we're going to end this video with a clip of Melissa Lanceman that said during question period, if I told you this was Canada in 2023, you would not even imagine it. Here's the clip. The Honorable Member for Thornhill. Imagine having lunch in a Jewish-owned business in downtown Toronto only to be shouted at because you're Jewish. Imagine being harassed outside your children's school where you've been told that they would be safe as they are escorted in by uniformed police officers. Imagine being told you shouldn't come to the office on, the mon on a Monday morning, or maybe they would be wise to take off the religious identifier that was meant to signify your faith off your front door because it would make you a target. You don't have to imagine it. It's all happening here, and it's further fueled by the irresponsible statements pushed by the Prime Minister, who six days after rep repeating Hamas's talking points still hasn't corrected the record. Mm -hmm. Imagine Imagine being terrified in your own community and having a prime minister who hasn't said a word about it. Quite the opposite. He took the word of a terrorist organization over his own militaries and our allies and still hasn't retracted his statement. Great job, Melissa. And that's where we're going to end today's video, folks. I'd love to know what you guys think down below in the comments. Do you agree? Do you disagree with any of the points uh, that were provided in any of these videos? I look forward to reading the comments when the video is posted. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to give a like and subscribe if you have not already. And I will see you all in the next one. Bye for now. Thanks so much for making it to the end of the video. If you want to support the channel financially, you can do so by checking out the merch shop linked right up there. Or if you want to do something for free, which is also absolutely acceptable and highly encouraged, you can subscribe right there. If you want to continue watching videos like this, you can do so by clicking or tapping right there to watch the next upcoming video. And if you want to watch a little bit of different content, but also Canadian stuff, you can do so by clicking right up there. That's my second channel, House of Canada, also known as the House of Commons Highlights. Thank Thanks so much for watching. I look forward to seeing you in the next video.